How you doing, Ed? Good, thanks. Thank you. You are too. Good morning. Yeah, you better take photos.
Welcome to our Truth and Joy conference this weekend. Were any of you able to make it last night? Heard really good things about it. So it continues. Um, as always, we have the worship, or excuse me, the communion in the back on either side. So feel free at any point in the worship to go back and take the bread and the juice to, to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We also have the flags on the side. Worship God with freedom this morning, whoever you want to, with, with whatever expression. If you do use a flag, just please be careful not to touch anyone, hit anyone, knock anybody over. Just be conscientious in your worship. Let me pray for us and we'll go ahead and get started. If you're in the back, come on in. Jesus, we invite your presence right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you, God, to come, come fill this place. God, we hunger and we thirst for you this morning. Once you lay your hands on your heart, Father, open the eyes of our hearts this morning. Let us see Jesus as he is, high and lifted up, Redeemer, Savior, King over heaven and earth. And that he is for me. He is for me. He is for me. Thank you, Lord, that every sin, past, present, and future, is nailed to the cross. Thank you, Lord, that we died and we rose with Jesus Christ and we are a new creation. We worship you for that amazing grace this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the 
the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. faithfulness this morning, Lord.
Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. right now. So stay standing. This will be short. Oh God. Ephesians 2, 4. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. 
It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. You want to know what the heart of God looks like? We look at the cross. We look at Jesus. We stare the Savior right in the face as he is crucified. That is the heart of God. That is the heart of the Father for his people. Thank you.
The cross of Jesus Christ purchased for us many, many amazing things. The list is infinite, and blessings are infinite. But the most amazing thing of all is something you will not fully appreciate until you go flying up into heaven to be with Jesus when he comes back. Or if, you, if, you die, if your earthly body dies and you find yourself face to face with him, it will be in that moment that you realize the depth of his grace to forgive your sinfulness and the great re redemption of your body, your new body, and your soul, and your spirit. In that moment, infinite, will get, infinite love will have a whole new definition for you. And the Bible says in Hebrews, do not neglect such a great salvation. And the, the great loss of those that don't respond to Christ is also infinite. We want to give you a chance to say yes to Jesus if you haven't yet in your journey in life. And I'm just going to ask that, I'm not going to call you forward, I'm just going to pray a short prayer with whoever raises their hand. If God is talking to you, he's knocking on the door of your heart and he's saying, this is your day to be blood bought. We you raise your hand, just raise your hand. This is your day. One person right there. Anybody else? Appreciate that courage. One person right there. Anybody else? Just raise your hand high so I can see it. Okay, to help this person out, let's say this all together. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. I call upon you to be my Savior. And my Lord, right now, I believe you've risen from the dead. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Young man, I would just say to you, ask yourself the question, who's been praying for me? Who's been praying for me? And then text him before the service is over today, okay? Tell them what you did today. Text them and tell them what you did today. Give the Lord a hand and a shout for his great salvation. Finish with one last song as we worship him.
Give the Lord a shout and a clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Your great name. Your great name, oh God. Your great name. Amen. Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to continue to worship with tithes and offerings right now. Our offering today is going to go to Steve Backlin and his ministry. If you're writing a check, you can uh, make it out to New Song Church, and we'll write him one check to Igniting Hope Ministries. If you have tithes for New Song Church, they go in the envelope this with your bulletin. Otherwise, offering today is going to honor Steve uh, Backlin and his uh, Igniting Hope Ministries today. So be blessed as you worship the Lord this morning, right now. Cool. Our Truth and Joy conference continues tonight at 6 p.m. with the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, students and interns ministering testimonies, healings, prophetic words, and more. 6 o'clock right here tonight. Looking forward to that. I love the supernatural dimension of truth and the supernatural dimension of joy, don't you? Jesus said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are truth. There's a, such an anointing on the truth and on the, and on the joy. I love it that it's heaven's bliss we're, we're entering into and, and experiencing our, the, the presence of our future now. Big welcome to our guests today. Please feel encouraged to fill out the connection card in your bulletin. Drop it by the visitor's table in the lobby. We have a present for you there I'd like to give you. Our prayers and love are for the family of Stephen Dyer Sr., who went to be with Jesus on Monday, July 27th. The memorial service is today at 2 p.m. right here, in the sanctuary here. We want to say a big thank you to the hospitality homes and the meal preparers, the power evangelists, prophetic appointment servers, Steve's team, and Steve, and everyone else who helped make uh, this Enjoying God weekend such a happy time in the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of serving that went on to make this happen, and I think the person that had the most fun or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, we enter into their joy and all this. The, the current count for the, we had teams from nine different um, church fellowships participate in the outreach yesterday in either treasure hunts or other kinds of evangelism, um, and uh, 97 salvation prayers, so that's good too, amen? Can we just give the Lord a, a, a clap and a shout for, <laughs> praise you Lord for that. We bless you. Amen. Steve uh, Backlin is a very gifted communicator. We enjoy his, uh, his, his teaching style as well as the amazing Holy Spirit life on his teaching. So give Steve and his team a warm welcome as they come and minister now. Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and what? Wow, and be glad in it. Just imagine that. We're not only rejoicing, we're being glad in it. We just thank you, Lord, for the oil of gladness. Yes, why don't you just um, repeat this after me? Say, God brought me here this morning because he believes in me more than I believe in myself. He's preparing me for something bigger than I know. Something's happening in me this morning. It's going to increase and I'll never be the same again. Amen. I think I was sharing last night. I think this is the fourth straight year I've come here in, in August, and and I like this place. I like New Song Church. I like what's here. I, you know, uh, you guys are radicals. You guys, there's some there's some Christians my mom warned me about here. <laughs> you got that look in your eye. 
<laughs> Dangerous ones. You actually, you actually believe the Bible. You actually believe it's good news. And just so thank you. Thank you, Dan and Brenda. Thank you for your leadership, your friendship, and just what you're contributing here in this house, in this region, and around the world. And, and just uh, thanks for just being true to the assignment the Lord has given you. And I just, I just hear over your lives, uh, it's a new season. And I hear that over your lives. It's a new season. I've got um, five uh, team members with me. I always love to travel with teams from uh, in the School of Supernatural Ministry. And uh, three of them are going to be staying tonight. And by the way, tonight's meeting is going to be a great meeting. If you weren't planning on being here tonight and you can be here tonight, I highly recommend it. Just something amazing when you give God some time, when you give God extra time, and you say, hey, Lord, I'm going to give you this time I'm gonna, so you have something to work with in my life. And so tonight's going to be glorious. We'll talk a little more about that in a moment. But two of the team members I asked to pray for a word for New Song Church, uh, Dean and Kirsten, why don't you guys come on up and just welcome them. And uh, Dean is from South Africa. He's, the third, uh, he's planning on interning for me next year. And, and Kirsten was in my first year leadership track that I taught last year. Um, and I asked them both if they would just uh, pray into New Song Church and, and just share what they're hearing for this church. If you're a visitor... You know, just take it for yourself, the region, for your church. But we want to bless specifically new songs. So, Dean, what do you got? Oh, God, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I felt a word for, for Dan and Brenda specifically. Um, and, it, and in giving you the word, I felt it's a word for your church, um, if that's okay. Could I ask you to stand, if that's okay? Um, the verse that's been speaking to me uh, even before I found out I was coming here is Luke 11, 11. And I see you've got uh, part of uh, that, that whole story on your doors, uh, Luke eleven thirteen, And uh, I feel it's, uh, it's no coincidence um, that that is on your doors. Uh, specifically, um, the story is about a good father. A really, really good father. And I feel like, uh, Dan, over your life, God's made you a great father, a really good father. He's made you a man, a father of many. And he's also made you a father who has the ability to, to raise up many children in the way they should go. Um, and he's also, he's made you a father that enables uh, children to be secure in their identity and to stay in their lane, to not have to be like anyone else. I really see you're a man who, who breeds freedom for identity wherever he goes. And what you're establishing here, and I feel like the, the new season over both of you, I just see the word family over new song, family over new song. And I feel like as the people are coming in, there's just going to be such a, a depth of identity that goes into their lives that's birthed out of your compassion and your love for people. And uh, I just see yeah, that there's going to be such, I feel like you're an incredible relator. And people are going to uh, understand the depth of relationship that they can go to in, in the company of the saints, what it's like to be a saint and, and the inheritance of the saints. Yeah, Brenda, uh, I felt that. <laughs> yes, I felt that. <laughs> it's a word that's come out. It's a word that's come out uh, yesterday, and I believe it's a significant word. And it's because you're a mother of this house, and that is the lionesses are roaring. The lionesses are roaring. God's put a, an incredible voice in you. I was reading in Psalms 18 the, this morning and this week that um, the voice, it's incredible. You read about 
in Psalm 17, it says, God, you've made me the apple of your eye. You've made me the apple of your eye. And then in Psalm 18, it's this whole psalm about how the Father comes to our rescue. And he spares no expense. And he's like a roaring fire coming down from heaven. And I feel like the voice of God upon your life and through your life is a powerful thing. That God is, is taking you to, to new levels, releasing the voice of women, that the, the lionesses are roaring in, in Medford. It's not just for new song. I feel like it's going out into the whole, this whole region that your voice will roar and that you will be one that releases the voices of those who, who have had it bound up. They are, who have had Amen. it bound up. You are a lioness and you are roaring in the spirit. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Jesus has so much passion for this church. I think he loves your heart to bring reconciliation, um, even among the churches around the area and um, people to their father. Um, something that I like to do periodically is ask the Lord, like, who do you want to become to me, especially in this season? And for this church, I heard um, in Acts 3, um, he's called the author of life. And in him, there's no death at all. And I just, um, I heard the Lord say, this is a church of blood hounds. They are after life, and they will find the life in everything and celebrate the life in everything. And to couple that, um, I thought this is an interesting verse to couple with that. And then I was like, Jesus, you're so beautiful. This makes perfect sense for a church full of bloodhounds. Um, <laughs> and it's Matthew 11:27 through 30. And it says, all things have been handed over to me by my father. And no one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son. And anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so in this season of pursuing life, um, the invitation is always to come to him first, because he himself is your peace, and he will always be the best. So I just bless you with that word. I release life. I saw green thumbs on everyone's thumb as I was standing up here. Um, you have the authority to create life and call life out of everything. And bless you with that in Jesus' name. Amen. You received those words? Wow. Spiritual bloodhounds. I like it. Why don't you just do a prophetic act and just go woof? <laughs> How many of you know it's uh, legal to have fun in church? <laughs> it's legal. You know, I've written a book called Possessing Joy, and I actually I almost wish I would have titled it Possessed by Joy. And, and, and just, um, you know, there's great purpose for every meeting and every ministry, and we celebrate that. And um, when my wife, Wendy, and I, we, have our, we work at Bethel Church. We're on staff there, just so excited about that. And we also have our own ministry called Igniting Hope Ministries, and we have a mandate to ignite hope in people's lives. And, and you know, hope has a good buddy, and the good buddy, his name is Joy. Seems like wherever hope shows up, joy is always there as well. And, and, and so just, see, just even today, um, I, I just uh, release unreasonable optimism over you. <laughs> Those who made a difference in the Bible were unreasonably optimistic. They were. You know, how many of you know David was unreasonably optimistic when he went after Goliath? You know, if David would have listened to the experts... By the way, let's just laugh at the experts. <laughs> the experts. 
If David would have listened to the experts, you know, they would say, hey, uh, David, uh, we just got the odds in from Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, they just, uh, somebody just texted them to us, and they, it's actually a million to one you can win. <laughs> but he didn't listen to the experts. And, 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 and I, I just, uh, just speak freedom to you from listening to experts. You know, obviously we want wisdom, but, but there's limiting beliefs experts often have. And so we thank you, Lord, for unreasonable optimism. God has not called us to be realistic. He's called us to be supernatural. God hasn't called us to be realistic. We don't deny the facts about that are going on. We just believe in truths higher than the facts. Some people uh, in this room are getting delivered from the news. There's people today getting delivered from being addicted to bad news. And we just say thank you, Lord, for that freedom. There, there's grace on some of you to go on a news fast. Just go on a news fast. Because if you feed on that, it'll put you in a cave. And what you think is true is not true, even though it feels really true. And, and we don't deny, you know, issues going on in America, you know, and just uh, obviously there's things that have happened recently that where it grieves our heart, but the, Lord, but the Lord's got a solution. He's got an answer. You know, some of us, like, we, we, we're like a boxer. We get an, we get an uppercut we didn't see coming. Uh, but, but I want to let you know, uh, you may have wobbled back to your corner, but you haven't been knocked out. And, and, and this morning, I'm going to be kind of like a trainer in your corner, slapping your face, pouring some water on you, <laughs> telling you, you can do it. It's not over yet. Say, it's not over yet. God's got a purpose for me. I'm more than a conqueror. I want to share out of 1 Kings 19, and then I'm going to share a message today called Seven Steps to Personal Breakthrough. Seven Steps to Personal Breakthrough. And like I said, we celebrate every purpose of ministry, but my purpose is about you, is your personal breakthrough, inner breakthrough. And Elijah, he's a, in 1 Kings 19. I'll just, I'm just going to just skip through some um, verses here, kind of set the stage. Uh, verse 3, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. <laughs> and it goes on um, uh, in verse 4. It's, he says, uh, I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah was suicidal. Then it says an angel touched him. Angel touched him a second time. And in verse 7, he got up. He, he ran for 40 days, 40 nights, and went to a mountain. It says in verse 9, then he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? You ever had the Lord ask you, what are you doing here? <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't really, it isn't always a, a, a geographical location. Usually for me, it's an emotional location. Lord says, what are you doing here, Steve? And then Elijah, you know, he, he's talking to the Lord and, you know, he says, uh, verse 10, I've been very zealous for you, Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. And he goes on and um, says, I'm the only one left. And let's laugh at that, by the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everybody felt like you're the only one left. And, and, and he goes, he's in a cave. Um, and just, I want to talk about that. You know, he ended up in a cave because of tiredness. He was not only a physical cave, he was in a spiritual cave. He was, he was there because of tiredness, disappointment, and spiritual warfare. Now, when you're tired, you're disappointed, and you've been in warfare, it's, it's a prescription to get into a cave. 
And, and, and many Christians in America right now are tired, disappointed, and have been in spiritual warfare, and they're in caves. Now, the symptom of a, being in a spiritual cave is this, is that what you think is true is not true, even though it feels really, really true. What you think is true is not true, even though it feels really true. Now, um, how many of you ever heard of the acronym HALT, H-A-L-T? You know, I'm sure many of you heard that. Never make a major decision or a major conclusion when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Halt! Elijah, before you say you're the only one left, why don't you just go to bed? Eat some food, let go of some things, and get back really in fellowship. Now, I like to laugh at lies, and, and we, we do that. Some of you never heard me minister before. I mean, I, I've got a whole message on a whole book out there called Let's Just Laugh at That. But laughter is a spiritual weapon that God has given us to let go of bad beliefs. It's a weapon. And, and, and I, I like to laugh at lies because to laugh, you have to let go of something. And, and so we're going to laugh at just a few lies. And we're going to sprinkle them through the meeting. <laughs> Why don't you just warm up your laughers just right now? Just kind of get, get them warmed up. Because <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want anybody to laugh suddenly and pull a laugh muscle. <laughs> so lies sound real in the darkness of our thinking, but they're laughable when we bring them out to the light of language and words. Lies sound really real. Here, yeah, when we're just thinking them, but when we say them, they're actually dumb. So just, just let me just have you just laugh at just a, just a few lies. You guys good with this? Just do an experiment. Just, you know, it, it's good to try something new. All right, let's, um, let, let's laugh at this lie. <clears throat> you, um, you are an insignificant person in the body of Christ. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, God will not provide for your needs in the future. <laughs> Things are so bad in America, even God doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Your best days of your life have already happened. <laughs> Things are only going to get worse for you. <laughs> so Elijah, he's in a cave. He says, I'm the only one left. Again, he felt it was true. It's not true. How many know prophets don't even always get it right? Just because somebody's got prophet after their name or before their name doesn't mean what they're prophesying is right. They may be prophesying out of their own tiredness, disappointment, frustration, and warfare. It feels so true. It's got to be true. Because my feelings have, are never wrong. Let's laugh at that. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. And, and, and he says, I'm the only one left. And you can read on. And, and, and the Lord says, um, hey, uh, <clears throat> uh, I have reserved 7,000, verse 18, in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to me and whose mouths have not kissed him. Talking about Baal. Yeah, I, I like to say God is doing 7,000 times more than we think he's doing. That's what the Lord told Elijah. There's 7,000 times more going on than you think is going on. And, and again, you're not going to hear what's going on by watching CNN or Fox News. You're not going to hear about what's going on. That's why the power of the testimony is so crucial. I was in, I was in a meeting the other day, just, and there, one, one of the evangelists at Bethel, unless you're watching God TV or something, hey, who are more radical than him. He said, there's these Iranian evangelists who are getting all these Iranian Muslims saved. 
I mean, they're bringing the power of God. They, and and, and uh, he said that there's actually, that there's people in Iran who are saying, don't go to the U.K. because of the Christians there. Don't go there. No. Do we hear about that? No. The devil, all he wants you to hear, he, here's one of his favorite lines. Let's just laugh at this. <clears throat> uh, God is not, uh, God's not doing much on the planet right now. <laughs> oh, I could just give you testimony after testimony. There's influencers in the room. You know, wherever you're in a position of influence, share testimonies. You don't know what to do in a meeting? Share testimonies. Talk about what God's doing. Go online if you need to go online. Just find testimonies. You got your own, pull out old testimonies. But just talk about what God's doing. It's the fuel for this revival. So, today we're talking about breakthrough, about you moving into a season of personal breakthrough. Just say, I'm moving into a season of personal breakthrough. I mean, there, there's a lot of examples of people in the Bible who got breakthrough. I mean, one of the, the greatest examples is the, the disciples in Acts 2 when the Holy Spirit baptized them. How many know that was pretty big breakthrough? You th especially think about Peter, you know, I mean, this guy denied Christ, he was a mess, he was shooting his mouth off all the time, things were seeming getting worse, and, and he, he, he goes to a meeting. Last 10 days, he's in the meeting, and then boom, he gets breakthrough, and he becomes a leader of the church. Let's, let's laugh at this, uh, but, but that could never happen in this hour. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> David's mighty men. First Samuel 22, I think it's verse 2, it says, Everyone who was dis in distress, discontent, and in debt gathered to David. <laughs> oh, there was about 400 of them. Man. Pastor David, he had a quite, quite the motley crew. And yet they got breakthrough. They, got, they moved into a season of breakthrough by, by partnering by getting in, in, in fellowship with David and, and the others. And, and they got breakthrough, and they became the mighty men, Second of Samuel 23. I mean, the exploits they did were amazing. And, 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 and I'm just saying, the Lord, the Lord is bringing breakthrough to me, to you. It's a season of breakthrough. And, and our breakthrough becomes somebody else's miracle. People need us to get breakthrough. There's people around us who need, uh, they need me to get greater breakthrough. And, and, and as we get breakthrough, they get in our breakthrough, they get saved, they get healed, they get raised up. And, and, and that, that's the story of your life. So you guys ready for seven steps to personal breakthrough? Step number one is build up your hope. Build up your hope. Uh, I was with a guy just this week who was just battling fear, and just fear was just seemingly wanting to overtake him, and he's just having panic attacks. And, and, and I just say, we, we just got to help you build up your hope. We got, we, 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 you're, 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 you're on empty. Your hope tank is on empty. You know, one of the best, uh, I, I heard of a pastor once who, when someone came to him for counseling, he had an inter interesting strategy. He said, well, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to prescribe to you mega doses of God's word, and I want you to come back in one week and see me. So here's what I want you to do. I want you just to get into the word like never before. I want you to listen to teaching tapes like never before. I want you to get into worship music like never before. And I want you to listen to testimonies this week. And I just, just get into mega doses. And you know what happened? About 80-85% of the people didn't need to come back next week. Because their problem was just a symptom of a deeper problem. Romans 4.18, it's a great verse. Talking about Abraham. 
It says, Abraham, against all hope, in hope, believed and became the father of many nations. Abraham, against all hope, in hope, believed and became the father of many nations. And Abraham was, um, I mean, you know, he had, his situation was pretty hopeless. Those of you know it. I mean, he's about 100. His wife's about 100. She's as good as dead. There's got a, you know, <laughs> a promise. Hey, you're going to, you know, a child. Yeah. And, and, and he, put, he put his specific beliefs of being a father of many nations in the soil of hope. Now, hope is the um, confident expectation that good is coming. Hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. And hope is a little different than faith because faith says, God's going to do it that way. He's going he's to do it that way. Hope says, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to do it. Faith says, if, if that doesn't happen, it's all over. Hope says, if that doesn't happen, God's got another, he's got something better. He's got, he's got an answer. And so building up hope is absolutely crucial for us to get breakthrough. So, so some here in this room, the, the, the greatest thing you, you can do is just feed on messages to build your hope. Just, just, just because once you start getting hope, hope Hope is the beginning point of all transformation. Hope is the beginning point of all change. Somebody's got to hope for something to change. Whether it's nationally or whether it's personally, someone's got to get hope. Hopelessness is the evidence that we're believing lies. And growing hope is the evidence that we're believing truth. We could say a lot about that. We, we, we were talking, Wendy and I were talking to, about this once, and Wendy said, she asked the Lord, hey, Lord, aren't there some situations that really are hopeless? <laughs> and here's what she heard. She heard this. Wendy, you can be hopeless about anything I'm hopeless about. <laughs> <laughs> and never once have we asked God, are you hopeless about that? Never once have we heard, yes, I am. <laughs> There's actually no solutions about that one. Let's laugh at that. Uh -huh. I want to just, just, just say this word, this phrase, there is always a solution. Say it again. Say it louder. That's one of the most powerful beliefs there is. It is supported in 1 uh, Corinthians 10, 13. It tells us there is a solution for everything. And that, br that brings up, I don't care if you're a million dollars in debt today, there's a solution. I don't care if you got fired this week, there's a solution. I don't care if you got a negative doctor's report, there's a solution. I don't care if your family just blew apart, there's a solution. You got falsely accused by somebody, there's a solution. I, I don't care what, what any Supreme Court does. There's a solution. Just say there's always a solution. That's number one. Build up your hope. Number two is this. Become convinced of your identity in Christ. Become convinced of your identity in Christ, who God says you are. Now, I believe that, that my ministry is a John the Baptist ministry. John the Baptist was a forerunner. He prepared the way. He was a wineskin upgrader. A wineskin upgrader. He said in Mark 2.22, you can't put new wine in an old wineskin. You put new wine in an old wineskin, it'll blow you up. I mean, you know, a lot of the things we're praying for, we could call, would be classified as new wine. Lord, I want more favor. That's, that's, that, that's a new wine of favor. Lord, I want increase uh, of, of abundance. That, that's, that's a new wine of abundance. 
Uh, Lord, I want more power. And all these are great things to ask the Lord. But if we, we get the new wine of those things, uh, before we get a new wineskin, those things will probably blow us up. It's kind of like they did a study on million-dollar lottery winners many years ago in Canada. They found out after 20 years, it was uh, 80 to 90 percent of the lottery winners were back in the same economic state or worse. Worse after they won a lot after 20 years. That, that actually winning the lottery made things worse in their life. It blew them up. I, I don't need a new set of circumstances as much as I need a new set of beliefs. <laughs> I don't need a, a new set of circumstances as much as, as I need a new set of beliefs. And new beliefs are one of the greatest components of a new wineskin. You want to contain the new thing God wants to give you? He wants to upgrade your beliefs, especially about who you are. Most people's financial um, situation is, is not a, a, a stewardship issue or even a giving issue. It's a, it's a worth issue. Because we're only able to receive what we believe we're worth. If we get more in, in finances, favor, uh, whatever, beyond what we think we're worth, uh, we, we will probably self-sabotage our life back to the level that we think we're worth. The standard of living, the influence. And so God, God's always, anytime you start asking for more, God starts messing with your wineskin. And it starts messing with how you think about you, about yourself. Because you can't do what you don't believe you are. We can't consistently do what we don't believe we are. If I try to do something I don't believe I am, I'm in disunity with me. For instance, if I try to act righteous but I believe I'm a sinner... I'm in disunity with me. How many of you know if you believe you're a sinner, you'll sin by faith? <laughs> in Jesus, you're not a sinner. You're a saint who occasionally has a sin, a sin experience, but you're not, you're not a sinner. Say, I'm a saint. Say, I'm the righteousness of Christ. Now, that belief system is foundational. I've got to get my beliefs right to get breakthrough. If I'm trying to get breakthrough without getting my beliefs right, it's only going to be temporary. And again, I love anointed people to pray for me. I, I, I love people to just to, you know, give me a shaba shaba. <laughs> Amen. I, I love that. Because I love being in the environment of people who've gotten a great breakthrough in their life and who can bring breakthrough to me. But for me to keep that breakthrough and let that breakthrough grow, it, 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 I have to believe truth. It's not what that person believes that's going to keep my breakthrough. It's what I believe. I, I was asking the Lord. I said, Lord, um, bring unity to the body of Christ so we can have revival. And the Lord says, Steve, if I could just get you into unity, we could have revival. Because <laughs> you're always trying to do what you don't believe you are. You're always waiting for some outward evidence to believe who I already say you are. I used to think I was a great man of faith because I saw something was actually happening in my life, and then I believed it was true about me. <laughs> the Lord said, no, Steve, you're not a great man of faith. You're a great man of fact. It takes no effort at all to believe something that you already see is happening. But we're, we're called to believe things we don't see. And, and many of them have to be about us. That's why I make declarations. I, I, I make declarations over my life 
you know, that whether it's um, you know, everywhere I go, revival breaks out. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Um, you know, just uh, I'm a powerful decision maker. I make declarations like that not to convince you, but to convince me. I don't tell you those things. I tell myself those things in private. Uh, I wrote a book called You're Crazy If You Don't Talk to Yourself. You're just flat out. You are. You're just, it's just ridiculous if you don't talk to yourself. Just crazy. Because <laughs> Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing. I got to hear something to believe something different. I'm not waiting for you to talk. I wish somebody would give me a word. <laughs> Nobody ever gives me a word. <laughs> you know what I say to that? Give yourself a word. <laughs> Be convinced of your identity. There's more we could say on that, but... Let's move on. Number three is move forward in your life. Seven steps to personal breakthrough. Step three is to start moving forward in your life. Fascinating story, Exodus 14. The children of Israel are at the edge of the Red Sea. Egyptians are bearing down behind. They're crying out to God. And God says this to Moses in Exodus 14, 15. He says, why are you crying out to me? <laughs> I'm sure Moses thought, hey, I thought that's called prayer. <laughs> I thought that's what we're supposed to do. He said, why are you crying out to me? He says, tell my people to move forward. Tell them to go forward. There's a time to pray and there's a time to move forward. You know, I'm all for praying. But for some in this room, it's time for you to actually ask God, what does it look like for me to move forward? It's time to quit begging. It's time to start moving forward. If, if you want breakthrough, you know what happened in that situation? They started moving at the Red Sea. Moses pointed his rod at the sea. Guess what happened to the sea? Can somebody say breakthrough? <laughs> That's a pretty big breakthrough. That's a pretty big breakthrough. There's another verse in Philippians 3.13. Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things, say those things, reaching forward to those things that are ahead. Paul said, hey, one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind. And I'm reaching forward. He, he had some things to forget. I'm sure he was in meetings where he was responsible for the deaths of, of relatives of people who were in his meeting. He had regrets. He, he, he had to forget a lot of things. He could have lived in shame and regret and what ifs for his whole life. But he said, I'm moving forward. There's some people in this room, there's grace right now to move forward. To let go of the shame, let go of the regret, let go of the what ifs. There's freedom to the what ifs this morning. There's supernatural grace to forget what you need to forget. Just let it go. Just say, I'm letting it go. Then he says, but he says, reaching forward to those things. Now, all of us have those things to reach towards. Those things are called vision. Proverbs says, without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision, the people cast off restraint. The more vision we have for the future is the more purpose we have for the present. The more vision I have for the future is the more purpose I have for the present. Forward-moving people, people who 
are going to have breakthroughs stir back up their vision. They start moving forward. They, they, they say, I, I, I'm actually moving towards something. I don't know what it is, but it's bigger than I know. How many know David, when he was taking care of sheep, uh, he had no clue what he was being raised up for? He had no idea. He didn't know he was going to become king. He didn't know about Goliath. He didn't know anything. And then one day, Dad says, hey, uh, take lunch to your brothers. Woo-hoo-hoo. And none of us know when our day is. <laughs> and it could start out ordinary. And then, boom, those things just, boom. They happen, those things. That's, that's why vision. I, I, have no, I, I have no desire to become a Christian pop celebrity. Let's just laugh at that. Ha, yeah, some famous guy. But I have desire to have influence. And, and, and God's called us all. Those things, part of those things is greater influence in the future. And so just, just even moving forward. And, and there's grace today for people to just move forward. For some of you, it's just to take a class. For some of you, moving forward is actually becoming plugged into your church. Just moving forward. Just, I'm going to be plugged in. Others, the Lord just saying, hey, start exercising again. Just start again. Start eating right. Go to that class, whatever. Just because once you start moving forward, there's a dynamic that gets on your life. It's a dynamic. Start your day off read, listening to an audio book that will inspire you. It gets on your life. You're moving forward. You're moving forward. You're getting out of ruts. People with breakthrough move forward. And we celebrate progress, not just perfection. And you're forward moving. We're not after perfection. We're after progress. Number four. We'll do these last a little quicker. Is so into the breakthrough of others. Seven steps to personal breakthrough. Build up your hope. Become convinced of your identity. Move forward in your life. And then four, so into the breakthrough of others. Fascinating verse in, in Luke 6, 38. Jesus you know, it's a, it's a verse we like for the offering. It says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap where the measure you use will be measured to you. That's, just, that's, a, that's a great verse. But the context of that, you look at verse 37. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. The context isn't money, even though it relates to money. The context is, is, is that whatever you give away relationally, it will be given back to you. You don't condemn others, people aren't going to condemn you. If, you know, if you forgive others, you're, you're sowing something in the spirit realm where it's easier for others to forgive you. So whatever we have need of, when we have breakthrough, whatever the area is you need a breakthrough in, ask the Lord, how can I give something away in that area? You need breakthrough with your children, sow into other children. You need breakthrough in your marriage, help other marriages. You, you need breakthrough in, in getting peace in your life, find a way to give other people peace. As you sow that in, you, you, you actually you, you get involved in God's supernatural spiritual laws. And they always work. It's impossible for them not to work. It's like the law of gravity. You, you know, the law of gravity just works for everybody. I don't care who you are. You go up the top of this building, you walk off, the law will be in effect unless... God just supernatural, you just have a faith moment like walking on water, but you know, it's going to work. And it'll work. You give, it's going to come back to you. Let's laugh at this. If you give in your area of need, it won't affect your area of need. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh-huh. 
Number five is pursue catalytic relationships. Steps to breakthrough. Pursue catalytic relationships. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks with the wise grows wise. Those we hang out with the most are going to influence us the most. You know, if we're trying to be an eagle and, and we're always hanging out with prairie chickens, <laughs> we're probably not going to fly like an eagle. And I'm not just saying get rid of friendships or, or disown family members, but there has to come a point in our lives where we actually say, I'm going to associate with people who are thinking higher than me. Because if I'm going to get breakthrough, I've got to be around people who've got breakthrough. I mean, again, a local church is a great starting point for that. It, it, it's a powerful, I love the local church. And, and, and it's so, so needed. And, um, but there's other ways. I mean, just, just, just other, you know, like small groups to get a part of in the church or other places. Books, audio books. There's great shows on Christian television. There, there's, there's ways to have catalytic relationships to where we're actually listening and in, 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 in contact with people who are higher than we are. I'm not going to get breakthrough if I'm just hanging out with people who are compounding the problem. Whether it's, it's negativists, <laughs> people involved in habits that, that I struggle with. Yeah, it, it's challenging to get, get breakthrough by, by being there. And, and I just see even this morning, the Lord is giving you hope. He's giving you an idea. Some of you feel trapped. Some of you feel trapped. And I see the Lord actually giving you ideas on how in your environment to get into higher catalytic relationships. And, and we, all, we all need at least one person in our life who can sh where we can share our deepest heart dreams and our deepest concerns. We need somebody in our life. We, we, we need relationships. I have a theory that all of us have at least one area of our life that we can't handle by ourselves. And I believe one of the reasons for that is so that we actually get into community and we walk in humility. Help! I need help! This is not working by myself. And, and, and just actually being aware of that and say, I got to actually, you know, if, you know, if you have something that you're just too ashamed of, whatever, just, all I got to say, just get over it. It may be easier said than done, but every person has, has, gets breakthrough has to humble themselves before somebody. Has to humble themselves. Because I'll tell you this, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And, and, and when God gives grace to the humble, there is break. That's breakthrough. <laughs> and keep yourself on a short leash where you could do dumb things. <laughs> Find a way. Somebody, somebody just, you got to get somebody in your life and just say, you know, this area scares me about me. This area scares me about me. Please, I, you know, I, I, got, I, 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 got, I need help. Just, uh, you know, just uh, and, and be accountable. Get in community. Start talking. Because all of us are just one dumb thing away from, Yeah. How many of you know that? We're just, we're just dumb, one dumb choice, just doing something stupid. We just, we just speak protection over people in this room from doing something stupid. Not thinking it through, impulsive. All right, last two. Um, number six is downsize. Seven steps to personal breakthrough, downsize. Hebrews 12 one 
Jesus said, or the scripture says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And just, I think, some just say, Lord, I need to downsize. Some, you know, whether it's downsizing responsibilities, downsizing, I mean, some downsizing house, house, some, yeah. I mean, one thing great about moving is when you move, you get to, man, I don't need this stuff. Yeah, Wendy, I think you should. You don't need all those clothes. Ha, ha, ha. That didn't go over too well. <laughs> but just learning how to downsize, you know, and it would say, Holy Spirit, just uh, give revelation on that. And then the last is this, be intentionally thankful. You want breakthrough? You know, I tell people, if you're stuck... Just increase thanksgiving. Increase thanksgiving always unstuck you. <laughs> Unsticks you, whatever. <laughs> Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Now, one of the great universal principles of life is this. Thanksgiving is a spiritual law. When you increase thanksgiving, you, you, it's, it causes you to go through a gate. Gates represent new dimensions, new seasons, new aspects of life, new territories. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah, this, this may be, if you only, only want to use one of these today, this one is a guaranteed breakthrough bringer. Because you can't stay where you are by increasing thanksgiving. Thanking God, thanking people. You just say, I'm going to go on a thanksgiving um, rampage. I release thanksgiving rampage over you. Because it it causes something to happen. It puts you in forward movement. It brings breakthrough. You, you can't get breakthrough if you're ungrateful, if you feel you're a victim, if you feel like there's no answers. Seven steps to breakthrough. Build up your hope. Become convinced of your identity. Move forward in your life. Sow into the breakthrough of others. Pursue catalytic relationships. Downsize. And be intentionally thankful. It, it, it's, it is breakthrough. And I'll tell you this. This is a house of breakthrough. There's nobody here by accident today. Everybody is here because God brought you here. Some you're not here normally. You say, why am I here? Now you know why you're here. Because God is, God's plan for your life is a plan of breakthrough. And his plan for your life is for you to bring breakthrough to others. So you receive the word today? If you receive it, say, I receive it. I'll never be the same again. I'm in a season of breakthrough. I'm in a season of bringing breakthrough to others. Today is my day. Today is a day of victory. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm blessed. I'm loved. I'm going to the next level. I'm a key player in worldwide revival. I've got what it takes. I'm an overcomer. I'm a history maker. I'm a breakthrough bringer. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen, amen. Give God thanks. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Woo! You're so good. 
<laughs> Pastor, turn it over to you, and I don't know, after the children, you know, if there's a moment for us to release just something real fast, or you just want to, okay, we'll do it right now. Libby, why don't you come on up and just uh, share what's going to happen tonight. And, and Richard and Nee, why don't you guys stand up and just, they're going to be here tonight with Libby. And you are going to have a great night. Nee's from Nigeria. Richard is also from South Africa. Libby, come on up here. Libby is one of uh, just a great leader in our environment. And I am so excited that she's going to be speaking tonight. What are you going to be talking about? Tonight, we are going to have a wild and wonderful evening in the Lord after this morning of catalytic break. Wasn't it incredible? Can we thank Steve one more time? <laughs> the dynamite is in place and the Lord is sparking it. So tonight is going to go through the roof. Um, Nee is the most incredible worshiper, and he carries such radical prophetic songs on his life. And so he is going to be ministering to us um, w through the power of song, worship. The prophetic on his life is incredible. I'm going to be preaching with my husband, Richard Gordon, who is standing here. And he is a man who has completely changed my life. Everything that I carry, this man has walked me through and loved me through. So we are going to be talking about how to navigate pain to live in joy. How do we live in honest joy in our lives? We need to be honest in our pain. So what does that look like, having a, a mindset of breakthrough and victory so that we can live in authentic joy? There's going to be a radical emotional healing tonight, healing in our bodies, our minds, our souls. So we are so excited and thankful for Steve. Yay. It's going to be good. If uh, the message today ministered to you, I would recommend Igniting Faith in 40 Days as a book to grab. It's a powerful one, or Victorious Mindsets out there. There's a bunch of great material. Pastor Dan, thank you very much. And the team will be available for prayer. Is that good? Once it's dismissed, so turn it back over to you. Let's stand up and give, let's stand up and give another applause and a shout to the Lord for his favor. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, for this time today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, uh, once again, if you're a visitor here today, we want to thank you for being with us. And don't forget to stop by the Lobby Bookstore. Not bookstore. We have, I'm saying two things. We've got Steve's books back there. But, and I got one of those little clickers. Brenda bought me one of those little clickers. Looking forward to those, having that declarations going all day long. And, uh, so, but there's a welcome table there. And if you're a visitor, drop by there, we have a present for you. So thank you for being with us, visitors today. And basically, um, now, uh, the team's going to be up here. Bethel uh, Redding carries this amazing uh, healing anointing. And we want to just have them pray for physical healing uh, for people here at the altar. And what I'd like to ask you to do is to, if you have some kind of comment um, to Steve or if you want to talk to him about something, if you just keep it to like, it needs to really be more like about 30 second thanks or something. Don't engage one person. I hate to be the bad guy here, but there's probably lots of people that like to say something to, or a team member. Let's not have a lengthy discussion. Let's just be a, let's let, let them have um, time to minister and to have everybody get to say something rather than one person say everything, okay? <laughs> so bless you. Have a great Jesus day. Hope to see you tonight. Amen. Come on up for prayer if you want healing prayer.